Now, my name is uh, Randy Goldsmith. My uh, Hokkaminian given name is Shulakolak, uh, um, which was given to me when I was uh, quite young yet. And uh, my, uh, my dad was a carver and he used to carve on yellow cedar. Most of the time it was yellow cedar. I used to watch him quite a bit. Uh, he used to carve on yellow cedar, he used to make totem poles, uh, or usually they were like about a foot to a foot and a half. Uh, these were smaller models, but he used to make like uh, probably five in one week. Uh, and we used to watch him uh, paint help them sand and I, I just knew uh, how to draw when I was a kid. I used to do a lot of sketching when I was in uh, Cook Silo School or the other schools before that. I did a lot of sketching uh, of uh, real wildlife animals. I've been uh, carving since I was uh, probably 10, 11. So, um, I don't want to say my age. <laughs> Forty plus years, I guess, somewhere around there. My oldest brother is, is still carving yet, mm -hmm. today. And uh, he taught me uh, pretty well uh, a lot of ways of uh, 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 shortcuts on carving. He taught me that, you know, how to make it, you know, work for you faster. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so he taught me uh, uh, quite a bit. Yeah, I did a few totem poles. My first one here was a 10-footer. Mm. And the top part, uh, I carved a thunderbird. Uh, as a way my late father used to carve. Uh, my father's way is some, more like a two-dimensional uh, most of the time. But uh, he did do uh, three-dimensionals, like, uh, like you see the grizzly bear mask here. Mm. That's in front of me here. Uh, he used to carve uh, like a two-dimensional. It wasn't really round like this. It was kind of a V-shape so that you could see both sides instead of turning around looking both sides like this. But you can see it, you know, looking at you rather than to have you looking one side and then the other. So I carved the Thunderbird his way. But the other half, I carved like a three-dimensional, the grizzly bear and the salmon. So I kind of put uh, him on top and my style on the bottom. Uh, I kind of started getting my own style of uh, carving to what I do today. The uh, stories I like to put behind my carvings, rather than to uh, sell it to a collector. And they all want to know what, it, what represents this, what represents that, the style of my carvings. Um, so I'd um, write my stories in the back and uh, explain what, what represents what, you know, the animal uh, has to have a meaning instead of uh, selling it and then they'll be wondering. Uh, this is a raw piece right here. Now this would be a raven, as you can see the beak is on this end. So I just take uh, some of the block now for the saw the forehead here and the back where it's going to arch here. Uh, this is a raw piece that I'm going to be doing. I could demo demonstrate how the uh, adze works. Okay, what I'm going to do is try to take this down here so that I don't want it to be too thick here because this is the beak part, right? So I'm going to and what I'm doing is using the outside of the blade rather than to have the, uh, the middle part because it's a U-shape, right? Tools that are made uh, a blacksmith in the area who makes our tools for us. And uh, if uh, you drew it on a piece of paper exactly uh, uh, how long the blade is and how much of a bent or a curve or a hook, 
<clears throat> there's a lot of the blades that were given to me and uh, some of them I had for quite a while what I would use is the emery cloth or a wet and dry cloth it's like sandpaper you don't want to use uh, too, uh, too rough or coarse a coarse um, paper you want to use a, a, a smoother uh, grit uh, you go uh, best one would be 600 1200 and that's really fine and that'll keep the edge on all your blades eh? is that when you're carving you learn uh, you know you learn a lot of things uh, as you go along and uh, like they said, you, you uh, learn something new every day. Mm. And uh, that's uh, why I don't want to give up carving. I want to keep going. I'd like to um, pass this on. I have passed my work on to my son, my oldest son. Now he's on his own. Uh, he stays in Saanich. The thing is, um, you have to have the patience in order for you to pass um, the tradition on. You have to have the patience. Uh, if you don't, then uh, how are they gonna learn? And it's, it's the same for them. They have to have a lot of patience to learn themselves the same way. Uh, if, you, if you can watch me first, before you even touch a blade, you gotta watch how I carve and how I, you know, how I, how I cut into the designs. Uh, you, you'll have to sit there for quite some time watching instead of grabbing it right away. Um, you can't learn how to carve in one hour or two hours. Uh, there's, there's, um, that's where your patience comes in. You have to watch a lot. Yeah, the people that order. Uh, the people that order them, uh, you ask them anything specific and they let you know, and they let you know how many animals on one pole and what type of uh, uh, traditional designs do you want. Or the, the animals that you do carve, you just, uh, you see it in the, the pole just by them telling you on, if you're on the phone and you just picture it right away. Um, like I was saying, if you, if you want something, uh, anything specific, and uh, you come up with the uh, type of animal that you really love, could be a swan, could be a loon, could be a bear, you know, a deer, and, and then I take it from there. You, know, you find the right piece, the one that's gonna look at you, and uh, what wants to come out of it, uh, then you, you start shaping right away. That's, that's the way I go about it in ways. Uh, I'd like to, uh, the creation, when you create something in your, in, uh, your mind works for you, how to create a piece. And uh, like they said, your hands, your hands are the creator also, They're doing all the work for you in your mind. In your heart too. When you when you want to let something like that go to somebody, you put a lot into it. You know, with your mind, uh, your strengths, and there's there's a lot of things that go into the piece, and that's why I was saying sometimes I don't want to let them go when I have no choice. Sometimes this is called the gouge. Uh, this is what I'd normally use to go uh, around the sockets, eye sockets, uh, or to hollow the back or the inside out. Yes, uh, this is just to um, take it out like what I was doing with the ads. Uh, this is just to relieve all that pressure that's trying to come out of the wood. Uh, because if you're going to leave it overnight like this, it'll start, it'll start releasing all the um, natural oils and preservatives inside of it. So it's trying to release it. Uh, the same way with a big totem pole, you cover that log up with a, with a wet blanket and leave it uh, so that it doesn't release all the um, 
uh, natural preservatives and oils inside of it. So this is um, a gouge blade that would take, take out quite a bit too, depending on the way the grain is going also, because you don't want to go against the grain. This is called a beveled blade. It's beveled this way, but flat on this side here. So you'd want to use that this way. So then you get a really smooth finish, as you can see. And it, it, um, I have to keep the blades, you know, really sharp. Uh, if you don't, then it's just going to tear the grain. As you can see, I'm just, um, I can go across the grain. And uh, that's a, a whole purpose of leaving your blades nice and sharp. Believe it or not, this is what I used on the killer wheel for all the details. And that's just a small little blade, but it's, it's called a relief blade or um, to do all the streamlines when you're cutting. When you're doing all the designs there, you want to do all the clean cuts and uh, that you can't even uh, be doing this because, you know, uh, a lot of the edges are like, you know, it'll just cut, it'll catch your finger because of your, cause of your, uh, your prints. And one person didn't listen from Germany there and he just went, there goes his thumb. <coughs> <laughs> you don't want to fill up the whole piece though with paint. I don't. I like to highlight it so so that you uh, see all the grain. You see a lot of the wood. And it, it brings out a lot when you leave the grain. The grain and it shows the, the piece looks um, uh, old. You know, it's an uh, old piece of cedar. And you want to... Uh, you want to have that shown. You don't want to cover the whole thing up with paint. It just spoils everything. You know, the natural wood. Mm -hmm. Yes. I use the uh, basic. Basically, I use the three, four, sometimes four. You got the blue, the red, the black, the white, the green, and the uh, black is. Um, uh, from the fire pits, mm -hmm. the ashes from the fire pits, you crush it up. The same with all the other colors, you use um, crushed uh, berries, mixture of berries, wild berries to make the red. Uh, the green is uh, different types of leaves. Uh, I don't have any white on this uh, mask here, but uh, they did have the white, uh, the crushed clam shells, seashells. Uh, the blue, they hardly ever, uh, they uh, got the blue from bleeding copper. The copper, how that gets on you. They bled the copper for the blue. And uh, to, get the, um, to get it to stick to the poles, they used to use uh, uh, bear fat, deer fat, uh, salmon. Uh, they used to use the salmon roll, crush that up, and that's what made it really sticky. Bind, binds to the wood and it stays on for quite some time, eh? Yeah. And uh, our ancestors would be so proud, you know, for somebody to go up there and do that and make their own colors of paints and uh, the traditional paints that they used long ago. Yeah. You have the killer whale here. And uh, what, uh, this is the uh, human face figure here, which represents the blowhole, as you can see the water spinning out here. And then you have these uh, V cuts, which represents the Thunderbird's feathers. These are also known as space fillers. And then you have the ovoids, 
uh, this would represent life or action in that movable part of your body, in their body. And then you have it here also on the tail, you see the ovoid, the eyes, would represent the movable part in the tail. And then you have the, uh, the S shapes here, and then the U's are in the middle here, which represents the skeletal part of the whale. Uh, this is my style of how I'd uh, um, express uh, a killer whale. But all the split U's and the, um, the V cuts uh, represent a part of the Thunderbird. Uh, the Thunderbird is a master, the, um, the ruler of the sky and the earth. Uh, that's the reason why they have a lot of respect for the Thunderbird, is they all have the uh, feather markings inside each animal. The grizzly bear here, who has the, uh, the frog on top of his head, is called the wakas and the spath. And as you can see, I carved uh, right through. Uh, my style of how I carve, I like to leave the mouth wide open and have his, his teeth shown. And uh, as you can see, the, um, the um, split U here and on his nose too, which um, would, um, he's shown his respect for the Thunderbird also. Something I've been doing for years, uh, like I was saying, some like 40 plus years I've been carving and it's uh, something that I don't want to give up. Uh, I never retire from it. Uh, keeps me, uh, keeps me going and uh, kind of um, keeps me strong. Uh, keeps me busy and occupied. And uh, like I was saying, to, uh, I teach a lot of younger, younger students or people. <coughs> to pass on the um, the tradition, uh, one generation to another generation, is, uh, it should keep going. I, I highly um, believe in all the um, traditional carvings, uh, all the stories. Uh, they all, you know, they all blend together. And when you when you're creating it, it's it just comes out naturally. Uh, you pick up a piece of wood, like you say, it just uh, it, it it lets you know what wants to come out of that piece the size, the length, and so all you do is uh, fill it in, um, and uh, like, you, like you're saying, you're you squalling, and you have to have that every time you're carving, or else it'll show up on your carving. If you're, if you're um, feeling angry and all that, then it'll show up on your carving also, and it doesn't just work out. If you're angry, it's not going to work out. Uh, <clears throat> you make a mistake, you fix it. You don't get angry at it and throw it down. Uh, that's, I've learned that in, uh, in my time. You know, I, I can't get angry at something that I'm creating. It's something that I want, uh, I want uh, to see it uh, finished, uh, rather than to just throw it down and start something else and, uh, uh, you know, can't leave it sitting there. Because uh, that's um, a part of you. Uh, it becomes a part of you because you're creating that that piece that you're doing. Uh, a lot of your work um, that you do uh, does become a part of you because um, sometimes I don't even feel like selling it. But you know, you, uh, jobs are hard to come by these days, and you have to you know survive. Mm -hmm. And uh, other words, then you just you just keep carving and keep going and going because I'll, I'll never retire from this. I never will. It's, it's, something, it's a gift that was given to me and it's something that I can't just waste.